Hello friends, this video on laws of motion part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Please make sure that you have watched parts 1, 2, 3 before going ahead with part 4. Now that we have heard the story of Newton's first law, let us start with Newton's second law. What did we see? We saw that Newton's first law was true for scenarios when net force is equal to zero. Because Newton's first law was for two scenarios. One, the body is at rest. So body at rest means the net force on the body is equal to zero. The second was it talked about the body at uniform motion. Uniform motion means it is under the action of balanced forces. That is equal and opposite forces. On one side we have the frictional force and on the other side we have the external force such that F is equal to capital F. Therefore the net force is equal to zero. Therefore in both the cases the net force on the body was zero. So Newton's first law was only applicable for scenarios when net force is equal to zero. The second law came into picture for scenarios where net force was not equal to zero. So the second law will talk about the scenarios when a body is moving under the action of a non-zero force. That means some the net value of force is say F and the body is moving under the action of that force. So the second law will talk about such scenarios. Now before stating second law we should know what is momentum because momentum plays a very important role in Newton's second law of motion. So what we will do we will first discuss momentum and after we are clear with what is momentum we will go ahead with this Newton's second law. So what is momentum? Momentum is product of mass of a body and its velocity. Let us suppose we have any object which has mass m and that object is moving with velocity v. Now if I say what is the momentum of the body then it will be mass into velocity. So momentum is the product of mass of a body and its velocity. So for a body at rest momentum will be equal to zero because velocity is zero. It is a vector quantity which is very obvious because it depends on mass and velocity and velocity is a vector quantity. So momentum is also a vector quantity that is it has magnitude plus direction. It is generally denoted by small p. In most of the places in fact everywhere you would see that momentum is denoted by small p that is equal to mass into velocity. Now let us take an example. Let us suppose that we have a ball of 1 kg which is moving with 10 meter per second. This ball is moving with this much velocity. So what will be the momentum? So mass is equal to 1 kg and velocity is equal to 10 meter per second. So momentum that is small p will be equal to mass into velocity which is equal to 1 into 10 kg meter per second. So this will be equal to 10 kg meter per second. So this will be the momentum of the ball. So now that we know what is momentum we will see how is force related to momentum. Now till now we learnt that momentum that is p is the product of mass and velocity. So if I want to know the relation of force with momentum what I will do I will first see how does force related to or how is force dependent on mass then I will see how is force dependent on velocity so that together I can find the dependence or relation of force with momentum. So in this slide what we will do, we will take two objects of different masses and we will apply some force on each of them so that both of them move with the same velocity. Just have a close look. What did we observe? 
we observe that here we took an object of heavier mass whereas here I took an object of smaller mass. From this end we applied force on both the objects such that both of them moved with the same velocity. Observe it once again. So we applied a force both started moving with the same velocity but the force which we applied on the heavier object is much larger when compared to the force which we had to apply for the lighter object. So what do we conclude from this? That greater force is required to set heavier bodies in motion. That means if we consider that velocity is constant, if velocity is constant, then the amount of force which we need to apply that will be dependent on mass. That means greater the mass, greater the force required to move it provided velocity is constant. Now we will see how is force related to velocity provided the mass is constant. So in this case what we will do? We will take an object, we will take rather two objects, we will take two scenarios where we will consider the same object. We will take a toy car, so the mass of the object will remain the same in both the scenarios. What we will see is two of them will be moving with two different velocities. Now we will try to stop them. So just observe this. What did you observe? In the first case, the car was moving with a velocity comparatively higher than the second one. Here, the car was moving quite slowly. So velocity was lesser. Mass in this case is obviously constant. So what did we observe? We observe that in order to stop this toy car, the amount of force which we had to apply for this, for this object which is moving at high velocity is more when compared to the one which is moving with lesser velocity. Just try to observe one more thing that before, before I applied the force, the initial velocity of the toy car was, let us say, V1. Now, after I applied this force, the final velocity that is Vf became 0 because it came to stop. So a change in velocity occurred due to the application of this force. So what did we observe in this case? We see that force depends on the change in velocity. That is a force was applied to change the velocity from V1 to 0. Similarly in this case also the initial velocity was say V2. The final velocity was again 0 due to the application of the force. So what it says is if, an, if a vehicle is coming with a greater velocity, a greater force needs to be applied. So force is dependent on the change in velocity. So from the previous slide we found that if velocity is constant then force is directly proportional to mass. That means greater the mass greater is the force applied. Similarly, if we say that the mass is constant, then force is directly proportional to the change in velocity. That is greater the change in velocity, greater is the force to be applied. Once we know how is force dependent on mass and how is it dependent on velocity, we can find how is force dependent on momentum. As we have already defined, momentum is nothing but the product of mass and velocity. So, we also know that force is proportional to mass. We also saw that force is directly proportional to the change in velocity. Now, from this equation for momentum, we can say that the change in momentum is nothing but mass into change in velocity. So, carefully observe this. If I say force is directly proportional to mass, force is directly proportional to the change in velocity when mass is constant. So from that we can conclude using these two we can conclude that force is related to the change in momentum. That means greater the change in momentum greater is the force applied. So this is what we derived for as a relation between force and momentum. So remember force is related or force is dependent on the change in momentum. So the conclusion is 
greater the change in momentum in a given time greater is the force that needs to be applied so that is force would be proportional to the change in momentum at a particular time thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and 